Well, I just find it interesting how it's like the red ones are original, but the other ones, you know, they actually get a fruit flavor. <laughs> you're not they have they long, taste like original. You're not okay. going to have a long philosophical debate on what is that? What is original? There's a long philosophical debate. So what is Grover? <laughs> what is Grover? So you guys just hang around here all day? Yes, and we do. <laughs> Auditions run until 10 o'clock, so we stay until 10 o'clock in case someone shows up. Because class is let out at different times. Mm. And you guys listen to loud is music? Class is till 10? Yep, their class is 6 to 9, so, yeah. and there are blocks that are 7 to 10. I've, okay, yeah, I've never had classes. Oh man, I, I, I had one as an undergraduate, and it was, it was, it was hard. So, I mean, because your mind is shutting down, your brain is, you know. Oh. I took a six to nine class in first year. I just, I find I'm less productive intellectually mm -hmm. after a certain time. Yeah. Yeah. Rehearsals, no problem. Right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. totally different. That's, it's creative. Yeah, it's, it's creative, it's active, I'm not yeah. it. But yeah, no classes. Mm -hmm. just, I'm just sitting there. Yeah. When I choose plays, what I'm typically doing is trying to choose plays that will teach the students something so that they, they come away with a better understanding of either a mode of production or the play itself. What we see is the audience is discussions between Harry, who's our politician, and the commander, who leads the terrorist cell, about a wide-ranging uh, variety of topics, political topics, but also about kind of Harry's complicated domestic situation. He's married, but he also has a young lover who lives in the house with he and his wife. Oh. <laughs> Very open-minded. Um, so, uh, it, it's a very political play, very kind of intense, we, 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 it will be performed here in, the company, in, this, in this room, so uh, it's agitprop, so it's a very political style of theatre where we also have a chorus who will be interacting with the audience and kind of challenging things, a lot of really heavy kind of political topics, and, but it's also fun in the sense that you get to be up close and personal with the audience and yeah. kind of mess with them a little bit. Oh, yeah. So it's always always a good time. All right, whenever you're ready. Tell me the truth. Tell me why you're doing this. Is it out of hatred? To hell with you. Look me in the face and admit it's hatred that drives you. To hell with you! You poor, lonely, isolated bastard. And to remind me that you need me and I need you. We get this. How did we become this way? Who runs the Revolutionary Federation? You? It doesn't matter anymore What do you tell me or not. If they can play Harry very good, then they can play... They can probably play a number of things well, yeah. Suppose they're traitors. Supposing the top man is infiltrated by criminals. Or foreign operators. Or even police agents. To create larger budgets and influence for their departments by instigating civil disorder. Unless it's a play with a lot of specific characters, uh, like while we're young, had very specific characters, and so people auditioned for specific parts. Okay. Uh, but last year for Electra, very similarly, uh, we sort of did more general uh, auditions. You know, chorus members didn't again know how many we were gonna have, and it depends on the show. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I usually just pick a few things and, I, and by using the same piece repeatedly, it allows me to compare and contrast the people who've auditioned. Right? Oh, they did that part really well. And I, you know, so it, it just helps to organize me as I'm looking over and thinking about casting. So I don't necessarily do adaptations. Um, I, I take the, the script as it is. I might edit it for length or I would... Um, it's not so much adapted as much as I have a particular vision as the director when I take on a show. So it has a sort of the earmarks of me working on it. Um, and I usually, again, try to pick shows that have something to say to an audience. Uh, and so I do tend to draw from things, but I'm always open to different ideas. How do you see the chorus functioning in relationship to the play, to the audience? Why do you think Riga put it in there? Well, I have this 
idea that just popped into my head whenever I thought, was reading the play that the chorus would be kind of, before the show starts, be sitting in amongst the audience. Yep. And then, like, nobody in the audience would even know that we're in the show, like, even if we walked in with everybody else. Mm. And then kind of randomly throughout the show, well, not randomly, but when our lines come up, <laughs> But with the appearance of real, yeah. 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 So it would look random that to the people in the audience, like, what, what, what's this guy doing? Why is he interrupting? And then, yeah, kind of like that. I've had a lot of experience finding vision and creating a vision for a piece. And so I don't actually have to, those first steps are easy and they're usually instinctual. It's an intuitive thing. So last fall, I was in Ireland, and we're wandering, we're in Belfast, and we're wandering through the neighborhoods, and there are walls up between the neighborhoods, separating Catholics from Protestants. And there are all these cool murals and all sorts of things. And at one point, we're at the quote-unquote peace wall, which is this massive, huge wall separating the neighborhoods. It has barbed wire on it, and it's just... And we're looking at all of this stuff, and the gates that close at night to keep the neighborhoods. What do I think of? Romeo and Juliet. Do you have that connection to a piece of, of fiction that you've been And involved specifically, in like how did you or perch the garden walls? They are hard, high and hard to climb. I'm looking at these walls and thinking of Romeo and Juliet. What's Romeo and Juliet about? It's about people from opposite camps who fall in love, Catholic and Protestant. So suddenly an idea for a play takes hold, because I'm wandering around a new city soaking in these murals and looking at the architecture and getting the feel of the place under my feet and suddenly my mind goes there's a play and a good one it's a good play to start with and here's an idea for it what if you put it in Belfast what if you explore the Catholic and Protestant divide through this play have them all speak the same language show that there's no difference between the characters and that this is an arbitrary dis conflict like it is in Romeo and Juliet Suddenly, there's a vision. It's just there. It lands in my lap, fully formed. Sure, I have to do some research and refine it and figure out how it's going to work in the nuts and bolts of it. But boom, there it is. Because I'm open to these things coming to me. It's what I call holistic dramaturgy. I just let it stuff hit me. And then I kind of make sense of it afterwards or as it's happening. To know freedom and resolve. To resist the handful of urban gorillas. Who would dare to impose the murder and kidnapping and terror? A government with policies not, not of our choosing. choosing. One of the things that I've developed over the years of doing this and doing a lot of drama with students is a way to gauge a couple of things. And one of the things I'm always looking for in a student actor is an openness to work. And so it's are they willing, able to take my direction and, and, and go with me on the journey of creating the play? Uh, are they willing to push themselves to be better? And you can kind of get that sense from talking with people. And so it becomes, a, again, that sense of are they people who can collaborate or are they just interested in their own performance within the context? There are mine, this, this gun. Burning my palm, I have to hold it. None of us has to get by the balls. Right. Any closer. Because I think there's a lot of fun in working hard. And I'm not looking for a bunch of people just to say yes to me all the time. I had an idea as well for the chorus, but this, uh, obviously we have built so much around it, but I will still put it on the table. Sure. Yeah. Um, I saw the chorus as, as a group of specters or a supernatural, a bunch of supernatural beings. They work in mysterious ways, they are not a part of the audience, they are not a part of the characters. Nobody, the audience can see what they are doing, the characters cannot. They are just sarcastically portraying the rhetoric, which I thought, well, it just popped yeah. to me. Popped no, I, certainly some of that I've, I've thought of in the sense that I think when some of the vignettes are going on, Harry and the commander or whoever is in the scene, yeah. They're not like the scene between, is it the lawyer, the student, and... The businessman, so the worker, and the student. Student, right. That's, that's for the audi audience's so benefit. <laughs> right, that's for the audience's benefit. That's not for the characters on stage. Mm -hmm. So they are oblivious.
to that. Okay. Everyone's talented to a certain degree, uh, but I want someone who can work with me and the other people involved in the show and who are willing to make that commitment. Harry, you know my father only concerns himself with big things. I can't talk to him about music or the solitude of the mountains in the evening. I want someone who's going to just try. And try is the important part. If they fail at it, great. I don't care. Because perfection is boring and dull. I want someone who's going to go out on a limb and, and try something. And so those are the qualities I look for. And it comes down to that openness. Is the student ready to try something new, to be different? Son of a bitch, stop dreaming! Don't you see me now? <sighs> Did you actually look at Fritz when you said I'm guilty? Yep. That was awesome. I thought so. I will choose an actor who displays that work ethic over someone who might be quote unquote more talented, but harder to work with. I hardly think that you're in a position of authority to pass judgment. Read it! For me, even when I choose my own shows and things, there'll be a style or a, and it's often a kind of realism that I'm pushing for. But as a viewer, I want, I want to believe it in the world of the film if I go to see a movie. And I don't want to... The minute I see an actor whose performance doesn't match, then I'm taken out of the moment. It's too over the top. I watch a Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings film, right? I accept a certain stylized performance because I understand it's a fantasy film. And Jackson creates the world and everyone behaves within it. Uh, and I'm fine with that. It can be quite enjoyable. But I wouldn't, you know, I don't want to see someone in that trying to be all mopey and realistic, you know, methody in that because then it won't fit with the tone of the film. So yeah, uh, it, it's really finding that balance point. I find in live theater, Oftentimes I have seen shows where it's clear the one actor did not take direction or whatever it was and seems to be performing in a completely different show from everyone else. Um, and that's distracting. I would beg that all things removed from Mother Earth be replaced. I would put my body, my blood, and my mind on the side of reason and compassion. I've never loved before and I will never love this way again. Christ, for once, be honest with yourself! Just be honest! I want to see the acting kind of line up with the overall vision of the piece. If it's going to be cartoony, great. Let's make it all cartoony. I don't want gritty realism stuck in there where it doesn't belong. Similarly, if we're going with something like Gotham, which I think they were going for that kind of gritty realism, uh, I don't want this guy playing the Penguin to be so cartoony. It, no one would accept him in real life, in the real life of the world they've created. He seems, it's an interesting performance, and he's a good actor, clearly, but it doesn't match up. No one would believe someone, you know, he'd be dead. Someone would kill him. Yeah, but isn't that not the idea? Because, like, 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 they want the penguin dead on the show, but, like, they kind of want... To kill him, but like, doesn't that make him more isolated? Like if he's like very different from the rest. I of guess, the but again, it was yeah. a stylistic thing. I just felt you can be outrageous and outlandish without violating the world of the film. Heath Ledger is a perfect example. We accept him within that film as the Joker because, even though he's completely outrageous at times, but he fits within the the realism of that film. Um, and the acting style is grounded in something we we get within the world, right? Nolan's world is this world, and he fits in perfectly. We don't think of him as an outlier, uh, because he fits the tone of the piece. What are we trying to do? Is this any way to live? When a society beats and maims its own, there's something terribly wrong, Harry. You have to make sure that when you're casting, the actor fits the part. If I need someone who's supposed to look like a varsity rugby player, he better have more muscles on him then you know he's got to look bulked up he's got to look the physically able to play that part um, and if you don't have that don't do it don't put some because the audience won't believe it they won't buy into it we make acceptance for age right we'll accept a, a slight slightly older actor playing Anne in Anne of Green Gables we know she's not 12 or 13 or whatever she's supposed to be in the play it's the actors older we make allowance for that and that's a, but as long as she fits the type, we, we accept her as Anne, even though we know she's 25 or 30 or whatever. 
And then I hollered down at him, Hey, old man, under six feet of Saskatchewan gumbo, what do you got to say to me now? <laughs> Creating the background story for a character, I think, is really, really important. Just in terms of just being as detailed as possible. Basically, my thinking was that the commander just kind of grew up in a really rough life, just really... Um, kind of poor, raised by, by his uncle, as opposed to mother, because um, I've decided that my mother was a drunk, and, and just hated having me, and there's evidence of that in the script. We run as we live. I went to California with a buddy, driving a three-ton truck to pick up honeybees in Sacramento. Weather was lousy, truck kept breaking down, eating our money away. We stopped in at an hotel, got a room together, but Joey's feet were rotten. When he unlaced his boots, I had to get another motel. The important part, I believe, when you're building a character, is to find the human in them. The little pieces that they've taken from the experiences in their life, but at the same time you're on the outside creating these experiences for them. Because you're only given a piece of their life in the form of a script. Harry obviously came from a pretty well-to-do family. Uh, his parents never would have broken up, but they probably didn't really get along with each other. They likely ignored each other through most of the time, so Harry's notions of a happy family life will be a little bit skewed by that. Um, when he hit university, he was probably quite taken with all the new ideas that he encountered on campus. He, I think that when Harry reached university level, he probably tried to become a uh, a radical in a similar vein as the commander. He probably wishes he had gone further down that road. Unfortunately, he kind of had a negating influence on in that, uh, as I discussed with Ben a little bit over the break. Uh, we decided that Fritz and Harry met during this time. And for every uh, protest or rally that Harry wanted to go to, Fritz was always there to tell him, now, no, be sensible. Play Scrabble with me instead. <laughs> <laughs> a large part of it is you know, uh, working from life experience, I guess, and part of it is just, you know, trying to think, well, how would I feel in this situation? Uh, a lot of it comes from imagination. Just knowing what you want from the character and finding ways to become that character, just outside influences could be anything from reading up on the play's history or just making sure that you know what you want from the character. Just, you can get influences from basically anything. I would say I, 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 tr I take a few minutes and try, and try to figure out my character, think um, what influences him and how things make him feel. I try to figure out how much of myself I can put in, if, if I should put myself in it. And then also I answer really, really important questions about my character and also uh, just little factual things to give him a little color, like what's his favorite movie or what's his favorite piece of music, color, things like that. It's not completely pretending, it's finding another way to be someone else, I guess, if that makes sense. <laughs> but it it can be difficult to try and get into character because, like, the outside world can, you know, be tough. And if something happens throughout your day and you're just like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this, it can be really difficult to portray your character properly. But, I mean, all you really have to do is get back into the mind state you were when you were being that character. It helps. Do you have any tips for how to get into that mind, mind state, though? Just think of anything you your character would be thinking of. Just try and think of how the character would be feeling during the play and just hold on to those emotions. You gotta live, Bella. Get out there and live. Oh, Sally, my dear, I can see what I've been missing. If you think, oh, I don't want to do this, then you're not going to be able to pull it off well. But if you think, okay, I got this, then usually it's fine. You gotta get really, really good at forcing yourself to not pay attention to stuff going on outside. I've got 
Fortunately, uh, the play itself actually lends itself to that well, because Harry isn't supposed to notice or acknowledge anything, or many, I should say, of the things that the chorus does, so I kind of have to train myself to not pay attention to what Malachi or Matt or whatever are doing in the background behind me. So, you, yeah, get, you get used to it. Premier Moshe Dayan has imposed an unpopular government on the heroic state of Israel. He's asked for withdrawal of our troops from the Mediterranean. Seated in expensive seats. Comprehending what once was. We've lost our youth. When we came... The babies cried as with universal colic. I just kind of block it out, try to ignore it. Pretend it's not happening. I usually calm myself down during the warm-up and think of the script and uh, what it means. And it usually... And, and I do not overthink it. I just let it happen in the moment. And if it happens and if the director likes it, then we keep it. You shall <laughs> We'll burn your house down, you son of a bitch! It's usually my own impulses. Um, uh, I do not know where these impulses come from. Uh, I cannot tell you right away because it just. But uh, watching, uh, reading books and watching movies and things like that. And also, you uh, you kind of get emotions from other characters that are around you. Put the fellow down, down. Put the fellow down. His mother said the boy was nice. But there will be whores in paradise. So let the fellow down. It's, you know, remembering who you are and also being able to, to breathe that character out. Being able to be able to being turn able it on, to on, on and off yeah. and like, you know, leave it on the coat hanger at the exactly. beginning or at the end of the day or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something that I work towards as an actor, being able to have my character as a, as a separate entity. Like, kind of like, like Batman's suit or Spider-Man. Like, my yeah. character is, is a suit that I put on, but Spider-Man is Spider-Man in the suit. He's not Peter Parker. So, that kind of thing. Oh, Mother of God, where am I on this earth? Who are these people? What am I doing here? And so you're never afraid to, you know, let it go and just like, um, you know, give it all to your God, not worrying about what anybody else is going to say? Well, I mean, yeah, like, especially with acting, you have to be willing to take risks and you have to be willing to look stupid and you have to be willing to fail. I ended up super messed up blocking-wise. And that's okay. Yeah. I mean, there, again, there's no blocking to sort of mess up, except <laughs> this is amazing. It's just when you're in the space, you do have to kind of keep in mind certain basic things like upstairs <coughs> and downstairs and yeah. allowing yourself to be as open as possible to the most, the largest number of people. I didn't start acting until grade 11, so that would be two and a half years ago now, three years ago, around there. And um, it was my grade 11 drama class that I just took because I needed an extra elective. Up till then, I didn't think I would have any interest in acting whatsoever. So I kind of took the class, and the teacher in the class gave me a really good piece of advice that um, nobody cares is the advice that he gave me. So that basically means um, no matter what you do, given enough time, everyone's going to forget about it and not really remember. So after I heard that advice, I thought, wow, I can do whatever I want with the acting. Let the fellow down, down. Let the fellow down. His mother said the boy was nice. But there'll be whores in paradise. So let the fellow down. Can't leave her alone, then pay for her services. Buy her things. Acting's what I've wanted to do since I was a kid, so I've definitely had to make sacrifices and uh, prioritize acting over anything else so it, it hasn't really been an issue for me because it's been something that I've, I've tried to kind of spend most of my time doing um, but I mean I know when I was in school taking classes and acting at the same time I used acting as kind of like a stress release so acting wasn't really for me one more thing to do it was something that helped me deal with everything else I had going on so I feel like if people think of it that way, that's actually a really good tip to try to balance everything out. Oh, okay. hey, break, break the break, 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 break the greatest swings. I'd give almost anything. anything.
to hear that great goose howl. See me running at break of day, gray goose on the prowl. Just keep running, but I can't get away. Gray goose on the prowl. Oh, hey, break the gray goose wings. I'd give almost anything to hear that gray goose howl. Not everyone can sing, that's for sure, but I think if your character absolutely needs to sing, there are ways to learn. Um, I know of a few people who actually, they couldn't sing, but their character had to, so they went through singing lessons at the same time as going through, um, like, rehearsals. I know people lie every day. Hmm. Here we lie for a cause. By pretending to be something else or someone else. Juggling the power of authority. I felt that because of that, the gesture, something, anything to defuse the situation. What in the hell did you do? I requested that these protections be withdrawn from my home. Rich was there that night. You fool. This isn't the land of the time of Gandhi. Those bastards have gasoline and weapons. If I'm giving all, I, all I've got, and if I'm putting all of myself into it genuinely, no director can get angry with you for that. They can question your motives, but I mean, I don't think Greg would ever fire me or be like, oh, that was... Like, he may say, you know, oh, that, I don't really like that acting decision, can you show me something else? But in the past, in my experience, especially with Greg, when I've been willing to be open and take the risks and not be afraid, I've always gotten a positive response from him. I like the sloppiness of the chase. <laughs> <laughs> oh good, it wasn't too back and forth. No. It was a little, I mean, it, it was, it looked, it did start to fall into a pattern, so we want to avoid that, but I, 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 I like the kind of freeness of it. Should have seen it right Yeah, I'm sure. Did I skip? Yeah, that's the section. Because you said something about differences, and then you picked up these differences. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's a, it was okay. Okay. And um, when we come back, Sunday, March 1st, is the last night to call for line. Sometimes Greg doesn't use blocking, but as long as they're in the right position and they're not uh, closed off from the audience. And I also uh, take certain notes um, for the actors if uh, they miss a certain cue or they drop a chunk of dialogue when we uh, go off book. It's just to let them know what to spend some more time on as uh, they go through the, the motions of uh, rehearsals. Look me in the face and admit that it's hatred that drives you. To hell with you. You poor, lonely, isolated bastard. And to remind me that I need you, and you need me. We get this? How did we become like this? Greg has been producing most of his shows uh, for the last little while. Um, but this year uh, I'm taking on that role, um, so it leaves him to just focus on directing so he can be with the cast 100% of the time. So I handle the promotional aspect of things and kind of the business side of, of things. So everything from uh, the budget, balancing the budget, uh, to uh, promoting the show, to uh, various n news and media outlets like The Buzz uh, and uh, The Guardian and so on. And we'll come back and again go top to bottom in Act 2. Uh, and then we'll take a look at how much time we have left. <laughs> uh, I mean, this thing only lasts. Yeah. It's not a very long act. Business is all about creativity. It's just uh, a, a different form of it. It's, it's uh, perhaps a little more structured. Uh, but even, you know, directing and stuff has some structure to it too. Um, and acting as well. Um, it's all about knowing the rules and then, you know, being able to put your own spit on things. So, um, I tried, you know, a, a new, a new poster layout, uh, which, you know, still had the vagabond structure to it, but there were a couple of tweaks to it. So, and the budget, the same thing, basically the same template, but a few extra things in there. So, it's really just about taking what Greg has built over the last 10 plus years and just trying to, you know, uh, put a new spin on it. You know, I bring in my own 
flair on things that I'm doing for the for the show. So do the actors, and so is Greg, and so are you. Um, so I think it's important to bring in your personality into things. Every character, but there's always a, a part of me in it, but it's more like what what I would be if I was that person's age, if I was in that person's situation. That which killed men and women a generation ago now frees them. Our sexuality is music and color. The sparkle of brains in our eyes, the touch. And I think, to a certain extent, you should go into something by thinking the audience doesn't care, and your goal is to make them care. So that's certainly what this play does. These people are going to be coming in, sitting down, they have an idea of what to expect, and then boom, we start coming at them from all four sides, pointing fingers at them. They're going to be freaked out. Um, so I think that's really cool, and I've never experienced that before. Um, and I'm excited to see what people's reactions are, because it's going to be very in your face. And uh, some people will love it, and I think some people will uh, be terrified. I smell smoke. Smell smoke and war goes 30 miles outside the city now. Moscow, Cairo, Los Angeles, Seattle, Tokyo, Vancouver, Atlanta, and Montreal have been proclaimed cities of minimal activity this morning. High temperatures, low atmospheric dispersal have limited visibility to less than half a mile. Downtown there it is. All schools will remain closed until further notice. The elderly and citizens suffering with bronchial ailments are urgently requested to remain indoors and to limit physical activity so as to avoid any stress or exertion. The World Health Organization has reported widespread epidemics of new deadly viral diseases affecting human and animal lung, intestinal and skin tissue. A special UN study of world food production concluded this spring has reported the desert regions of the earth are spreading at 70 miles per year. The disease was first detected in low-protein equatorial areas of the world. The WHO has appealed to all nations to restrict air travel to prevent the rapid spread of epidemics to the temperate nations of the globe. I think the worst thing you could say is good job whenever they didn't do a good job. Mm. Um, I don't think you should be uh, a stick over their head either, um, and I don't think you should be cruel to them. Uh, I think that constructive criticism is the best kind of criticism and um, being able to lead by example, too. If you pull them like yeah. this, get away from me. Get away from me. Oh. Yes, <laughs> somehow get over here so you can sit oh, over here. I, <laughs> it, right? I can understand and rationalize at a distance, but I'm still a woman. This is my life, my home. I'm married. If I have an idea about the production, I, I definitely don't fear bringing it up to Greg or Heather. Um, because I mean, we all work together, like even Heather and I, during this full run, we're in the back talking about when we should start sound cues, start lights. Um, so even if, even if I think they might be, not necessarily wrong, but something might, could be different, I'm, I don't feel afraid to bring it up to them. Oh, Sally, my dear, I wish I could bed you. I saw him reply, he would say I misled you. Something in us that is naked in the black. No spelling wind. Keeps laughing at God. Laughs at the devil. Clean up, clean up, everybody do their share. Oh, was that bothering you too? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Ooh, a nice treasure chest full of. Yes, Ooh la la. Who is this? Who is this young married couple here? Oh, oh it's it's just, just selling me. Just a picture. If you can teach someone how to do something and give them the tools to be able to, to figure it out for themselves, that's much better than either letting them do a shitty job or berating them for doing that shitty job. Malachi, you need to go over John's lines. Yeah. Where, I, what I really want is, right now they're a little choppy as you're kind of searching for them, just get real comfortable with them. And again, if they're not exactly no perfect, that's fine, just put, so that it just comes out. Everything we're doing, every time anyone, just a new idea or a new concept, a new technique, anything that, that someone gives to me, it brings a whole new other level of life to, the, to what you're doing, to, to how you approach everything. I, I love it. It feels, it feels like everything I learn, the more, the more life I'm, I feel like I can bring to what I'm doing. Do you find that studying acting sucks the life out of the enjoyment of doing it? Like, by analyzing little pieces like using verbs, do you find it takes away the fun of acting? 
No, because at the end of the day, these are all tools with which we want to achieve a goal, and uh, the goal is far more interesting than anything else, and it depends uh, if we want to use those tools or not. Hey, up your ass, buddy! The next time, we'll be giving the orders! If you're lucky, or you will float down the river like a bloated frog. There is something incredible about a live performance where you have a group of people watching a group of people perform. They share the same experience of time passing. They're breathing the same air. There's just something really special to my mind about that exchange. And that's what keeps me coming to theater. That moment of people communally sharing in an experience. The issue is unemployment and inflation. Milk is up to 52 cents a quart in Winnipeg now. Gentlemen, we need less disruption and expenditure. The cost of unrest is high to the consumer and the businessmen. Taxation is increasing 7% this coming You way. bastards, stay away! We got slaughtered. The scent of kerosene and sulfur hangs like a shroud over the city tonight. The only impossible things are if I fall in love with a script and then quickly realize I can't do it here. It's disappointing, <laughs> but I move on. Being emotionally vulnerable in a performance, that's part of the business. But there are those other things. That, that get put into it that I'm not willing to ask a student to do. They still have to exist on this campus after the fact. It's not like asking a professional to do it. That's part of the professional job. You're paying them. It's a totally different situation. So yeah, always in mind as I'm picking things is the fact that I have student actors and there's only really so much you can ask and expect from them. The idea tonight is just uh, try different things. Don't feel like you have to give a fully fledged performance. Uh, it's really just a chance for us, we'll climb it, give a sense of kind of where we are in terms of a rough run, as well as gives you a chance to kind of, especially the chorus stuff, because I'd like as much as possible the chorus lines to be one, you know, fairly quickly paced in terms of picking up your cue. So it's starting to sound kind of uh, like a single voice as much as possible. I realize some of them aren't designed that way, but some of them that I've artificially broken up much as we can kind of go quickly through them. I just think that'll have a really cool rhythm uh, and it'll sound really, really cool. I can do theater anywhere, so uh, we overcome a lot of those problems just by being inventive. Ready for possible steal? You have two minutes we and can, we can go. go. <laughs> Driving. Seat, sitting? Sitting. Uh, moving. Props. Prop. <laughs> sitting. Is it, is it a movie? Sit. Is it? <laughs> sitting! <laughs> Bang. Shot. Kill. Sit. Take place. Suicide. Dead again. Suicide. Homicide. Uh, Hat, afro. Uh, beard. Osama. Osama Bin Laden. Zero Dark Thirty. Okay. I think this is a reference I don't know. <laughs> oh. uh, is uh, that a hat? A hat. That's a hat. A hat. <laughs> yeah. oh, right. Right. Here. Six sleep swans swam swiftly. Six sleep swans I am pushed to exceed what I've created previously. So I guess I influenced myself in some ways. I've done one thing, I did well, let's do something better with something else. And so I'm always pushing against myself and my past to be better than I was the, the first time out or the last time out. Where's my, what's my best play? The next one, that kind of idea. One of the things we're gonna be experimenting with is a lot of alienation technique. So there won't be any attempt to kind of hide costume changes. We're going to make this overtly theatrical, really engage an audience in a very different way than we have uh, previously. Um, so for those of you in the chorus, when you are becoming from chorus to someone else, it will be in full sight of the audience. Um, and it will be pulling on a costume bit or something, just to kind of 
just kind of toying around what that might actually look like. So even if you got like a, like a stupendous offer to make one of your dreams come true, you would still put class and rehearsal time in yeah. front of it. Those are my commitments. Yeah. You want me. Oh yeah, we're going to pay you $10 million, come and do this or whatever. Yeah, you do it on my schedule or I'm not doing it because I have commitments I have to honor. Incited in our second to the common cold is an industrially debilitating disease. Three types of shade tree in downtown Toronto budded but did not leave. Don't worry if you come in at the wrong time. I'm, that, I'm less concerned about that than they get hurt. They're going to be either pre-shadow or, or foreshadow or echoes of Harry. Either is fine. I want to do the weather report again, so I want to try something, and we'll go, and I want to do the sequence from Google we'll Fair from Jenny onwards again. The other day, my car tires were slashed, and my windshield was broken. To a certain extent, we don't do the shows for the audience. We hope they like it, but we do them because we think they're worth doing. I believe in the inherent goodness of mankind, but we have to be alive to force the changes and appreciate them. Then I will give my life and stand up like a man, rather than stumble and rot as a non-person tied by his toes and cock to a non-life. Robert, you want to make a statement with your acting, why? Uh, the, uh, the greatest impact I think that an actor can hope to have is to try and tell a me like create a message interwoven with the story they're trying to tell. I think that stories have an awful lot of power behind them if they're told properly. So I want to be able to change the world for the better, and because acting is what I can do, this is how I want to try and change the world. Getting involved in extracurricular activities with the Theater Society or Vagabond, it's a bonus and you'll always have it to carry through life. And I think everyone should take it because it's wonderful for public speaking, for your confidence, your self-esteem. It's, it's wonderful. Any in interesting story on the lights or, or were they difficult to put up or how did those lights come about? I designed it and we you put it up. Me. I like oh, you. Marcel, okay. Oh, for sure. Youths could have guns. The youths could have guns. Knives. Knives. Um, it says knives. Read your script. Yeah. It's your first time with a knife. Sorry. Handheld <laughs> weapons of some sort. Well, they can't be Hey Courtney, can you can you maybe show, show us your gun? Like talk a bit, a little bit about your gun, possibly about what? It's a gun. Yeah, I know, right? That's what I'm thinking. Like, could you could you talk about your gun? Yes. Yeah, so. Uh... <laughs> My favorite day every year is is convocation, graduation, when I see a student go across the stage and get his or her degree. That's my favorite day of the year. Even better than Christmas or your birthday? I don't do anything on my birthday. I don't care about my birthday. Christmas is fun, but yeah, that's my favorite day of the year. Especially if I helped. Small part. Helped. Yeah. Well, no, so, no small parts, only small actors, I guess. Well, I mean, in terms of the size of the contribution to the yeah. achievement. Um, yeah, no, that's, those are my favorite days because that's an accomplishment a student has achieved on his or her own, but I've helped. Uh, so Devin and Justin getting into National Theatre School, that's great. They did that. I helped. And I, I, I'm proud of them for their accomplishment. Everyone's like, wow, you did that. It's like, no, no, they did that. I just helped. Maybe that's why I like directing so much. <laughs> I'm not the guy on stage. I want the people on stage to get the, the, the applause and and, and the kudos. But I, I like knowing that I helped.